So question for you guys, thank you for joining me. Is the Agency UK the best brokerage system in the UK? What are your thoughts? I, of course, I think it is. I, I think I'd, it'd be insulting not to say it, um, but absolutely. Um, I obviously have only started recently, so I can only compare this. I haven't looked at any other brokerages, but the support that I've felt personally has been next to nothing. It's been a journey, but I wanted to be a bit of a sponge throughout the whole process, really, and speak to people from different backgrounds, different ages. People have been in the industry short short amount of time, long amount of time. And I speak to people from Cornwall, from London, all over the country. So, of course, I think I think it's the best best thing I've done. Just checking, you meant to say the sport was next to nothing, is what you said just now. Did you yeah. mean to say that? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the I think the thing with when like if, if you're going to give up your kind of recurring income from the high street or whatever your background is and you're going to come and, and do what we've done, I don't think it's necessarily about us being necessarily the best brokerage. I think we're the best brokerage for the types of agents who want to be a part of something that's greater than themselves, right? I think that if you're with some of the more kind of singularly branded agents and, and you want your individual brand and you need your face everywhere, then... That's great if you if you want to do that. I don't see that being a huge benefit in the marketplace that I work in, which is why I'm here. And I think that as long as people are out there trying to do the right thing in our space, then the whole industry as is, is, is a whole benefits from that. So what I really like about being here is the fact that the biggest issue I had in year one, when there was about six of us, I think year one at the time when I joined, it gets incredibly lonely. So to have you know, guys that you've got a lot of respect and a lot of time for to be at the end of the phone when you need them or even just have a bit of banter in a, in a group chat every now and then. I think that uh, being quite a self-confessed, um, unsociable person, even I need to reach out sometimes and have a bit of a whinge, a bit of a moan because the job can be a little bit like that. So don't you think? I think so. I, I think that it's 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 not just the people that, that you work with or you talk to on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's the get-togethers, it's the kind of quarterly conferences, it's the it's that, although you're running your own business on a day-to-day -day basis, you feel like you're part of a team. You feel like there's always someone at the end of the phone to help you with something, or again, if you're unsure on something or you're having a dull moment, someone's there. And I think that that's what I feel our brand has got com when you kind of compare it to some of the competition. I think to have full confidence in what we're doing in the space that we're in, you need to constantly question how you're doing things. That's what I think. I think that there's no right way of doing it. I think there's a more optimal way and maybe a, a suboptimal way of doing things. But when you all get together and you hear the things that other people are doing in their own marketplaces, it kind of spurs you on or, or questions, you know, how you're going about doing things. And I think for any business, I don't think it really matters the size of the business you're in, whether it's the size of something that I do on a day to day or whether you're Apple or whether you're, if you're not questioning how you're doing things, if you're not constantly having people go, well, I know you're trying that, Nick, but have you thought about doing it this way? Have you considered running it this way? And, you know, you quite famously, Tom, said to me about having the performance enhanced fee. So we, we, we were in a situation at the time where we were going above and beyond and achieving some really wild prices for people when the market was booming. And, and we changed our fee structure and that came from from Tom. And, and that for me, when I started my business, was the difference between me making it to the end of year one and not. So it is, you know, having people like that in the background is so important. And I think that comes back again to that kind of team mentality. There's the option of the, the kind of bi-monthly call, bi-weekly call where you can sit on a, a team call once every couple of weeks if you want, get some tips, get some conversation about what's working in different areas of the country. Um, so yeah, whilst you're running your own business on a day-to-day -day basis in your own town, hometown or home city, there's always that support network there, be it the conferences, be it the kind of couple of week calls on Zoom. Um, you feel like you're part of something yeah. bigger. And again, everyone that's joined this group has joined it for a reason. It's not to get rich quick. It's not to grow too quickly. It's about the right people with the right mentality. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, th I think the first year for me, I was it was daunting. And without going on these weekly calls you know that was daunting in itself because you met with people like this um but they were so down to earth about how they've got to where they've got to that it gave me a lot more confidence in my ability to get to that stage as well even without going to the conferences i I've, i love those and not just for the drinks afterwards um <laughs> the, the, the drinks are good but the amount that i've learned and been able to hone in on and use in my day-to-day -day sort of structure of business now has been next to nothing 
I think it's a real kind of collaborative, supportive environment as well. So yeah, people look up to me, people look up to some of the people that have been around for a little bit longer, but we always remember we started somewhere. Um, and again, as Mia's just said, it's quite daunting your first week, your first month, your first six months, when you hear about people doing big volumes of business or high, high level fees and you think, how do I get a bit of that? But again, we're all here to support each other. And I think that's something that's quite unique to our business. I'm not competing with another, another agent for my model within my town. I've got my set core postcodes. I've got my set area that's my, my area exclusive to me, but I'm there to support people up and down the country. And I think that's us as a whole as well. I think we just have an undertone of collaboration over competition. You know, I think together, pulling in the right direction, we're going to go further than if we're all trying to do our own thing and all trying to build it in our own way. So there's, I think uh, certainly over the period of time we've been doing this now, you've got real life case studies of how to grow this from the ground up. And I think that in a lot of the similar brokerage models to us, it's almost a single swim. It's like jump in there. If you're good, you'll make it. And if not, but I like to think here that, you know, if you're going into it and you have a, maybe an element of anxiety about maybe, maybe even over your own skill set, you can come somewhere where you've got mentors around you, where you've got people around you who can steer you in the right direction, maybe even push you out of your comfort zone. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, Nick, Nick's done that to me a few times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've become a better agent for it. Um, I always say that I've felt more comfortable, more sort of family around the Agency UK in a year that I unfortunately, six years on the high street, I'd never felt. And I was sat next to negotiators and valuers. And having, you know, some of these people I didn't even meet for about six to eight months and meeting them was just like, oh my God, is this person I speak to on a weekly? So having that was probably the reason I think why I've succeeded uh, so quickly, I think. Yeah, it's, it's great to hear estate agents working together so well because I think historically, if you look up and down the high street, if you work for a large brand, the first person you want to beat is the other brand of your Absolutely. the other office. And that's like the number one thing you want to beat. You want to beat your teammate. Yeah. Sort of thing. So well, I, think nice I think it goes deeper than that as well. I think in, in a lot of agencies, you're competing with the other people in your office. Yep. You know, it's I want to get my offer accepted, not your offer accepted. And, you know, I think that it's that competition that is kind of systemic in why estate agents have the reputation that they've built over the last 30 years because it's very kind of cutthroat and very salesy. And I think the way that we all look at it is that if I'm winning, it doesn't matter whether me is the other end of the country or not, but if I'm winning, she's got somebody she can tap into and go, okay, what are you doing every single day? Well, how do I replicate that? How do I make it more Mia? And likewise, you know, there's a lot of things Mia's done in the, in the past 12 months, built an amazing business. And there's times where I've gone to Mia in reverse and gone, okay, I'm having a bad time of it. What are you doing right now? And it's just having that safety net. I've always, I've always said with TA UK, you've got people there who are a safety net and they're a safety net when you need them and they're your cheerleaders when you don't. And I think it's that blend that we've managed to really get right since it's you and I joined. It's support, isn't it? I, I think you just nailed it there and said, like, you, you've got your own business that's you on a day-to-day -day basis, but there's always support around you, isn't there? And and if you're winning, I'm winning. If 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 you're winning on an, in Liverpool, I'm winning down in Bristol because we're growing the brand collectively and we're growing it to support each other. I think it holds uh, people accountable as well. I mean, it's singularly branded. I think that if you join and you see agents doing really, really well, it may be intimidating but you think that's that's the level I've got to be at to carry the brand to that level. Whereas I think that if you're running it maybe with your own name or maybe just a generic term, because um, I see lots of them now, maybe maybe it's easier to go hiding. Maybe it's, maybe it's harder to feel that accountability or feel that kind of pressure to be at the certain level that you should be to, to supply the best service for people. So I think us having a really top quality brand is, it's all about the people. And it's about that collaboration over the competition. I and mean, it's that focus on doing the, doing the simple things right. So leading with customer service and then the business kind of follows rather than just very numbers orientated. It's look after the customer and the customer will look after you. And I think that's something we all share as a collective, as a belief. Yeah, and I think when you, when you start in this process, when you go self-employed, you know exactly what you should be doing, but you don't necessarily know how to achieve it. And I think that having those people around you really opens a door up to, okay, that's how they're, they've built it the way they've made it. That's how their social media looks so good. That's how they're getting these reviews. That's how they're building their brand. And I think that that is worth its weight in gold because I don't think there's another business you could go in where you have a roadmap to success to the day you start. Whereas I think here we've now got a, almost a bulletproof plan of how we can get people to that level 
regardless of experience and regardless of their kind of history in property. So I think that's really, really important. It goes back to something I said earlier as well about the two biggest worries about coming into any self-employed space is cash flow and then lead generation. And I think we've got a solution for both of those now, the advance commission for the cash flow and then lead generation. You've got guys and girls on the ground who've been there, who've done it, who've got a business plan that works. And that's that's for anyone coming on board to kind of tap into. Yep, brilliant. Guys, thank you so much for your thoughts. It's been really great to hear. Thank you very much. Thank you.